Hey guys, now we are going to learn about another category of drugs which we call as neurologically active drugs. So as the name suggests, they are neurologically active, meaning that they affect the central nervous system of our body. Now how do they function? Well, they affect the message transfer mechanism from the nerve to the receptor. Okay, so this is the main function or main, you know, the kind of mechanism how do these work. Next we see that these neurologically active drugs, they are divided into two main categories, the tranquilizers and the analgesics we can see. So in this lesson, here we will first learn about the tranquilizers. So when we talk about the tranquilizers, the term tranquil means to calm down. Okay, so here we see that these tranquilizers, they are very helpful in the treatment of stress and mental diseases. So any kind of disease like a mild or a severe mental disease, these tranquilizers are helpful so as to calm down our nervous system. Next, they also help in relieving from anxiety, from irritability, etc. We also see that once a person become normal, calm, there occurs the, or you know a sense of well-being. So these tranquilizers, they induce a sense of well-being. Lastly, we see that tranquilizers, they are main component or they form a major component of sleeping pills. So moving forward, let's see how these tranquilizers work. So here, let's discuss about noradrenaline. Noradrenaline, it is a neurotransmitter which plays a very important role in mood changes. So here we see that it acts as a chemical messenger. It means that it binds to a receptor because of which it shows a signal sending activity. Due to these signals, our mood remains normal. Now imagine what would happen if the level of noradrenaline falls down. Well, if the level of noradrenaline gets low, the signal sending activity also lowers down. And due to this, the person suffers from depression. In such situations, if we administer antidepressant drug, then the person becomes normal or happy again. So it is so because the signal sending activity has increased. Let's figure out what did this drug do to increase the noradrenaline level. So here we will see two important things. First, how noradrenaline levels decrease and second, how drugs can counteract it. So to first see how noradrenaline level got lowered, let's have a look at an enzyme activity. In our body, there is an enzyme which when binds with its substrate, it results in the degradation of noradrenaline. Now, since the degradation of noradrenaline has been catalyzed, the level of it gets lowered. And finally, the signal activity also gets lowered. And now the person suffers from depression. Second, let's try and see what happens when we administer a drug. Here we see that the drug binds with its enzyme and inhibits the catalytic activity. So we see cause of this degradation of noradrenaline stops. The normal level of noradrenaline maintains a normal signal sending activity and the person remains normal and happy. Next, let's see some commonly used antidepressants. The two most commonly used antidepressants are aprinozide and phenylzine. So this was about the tranquilizers where we have seen that how do they work. We have discussed about the noradrenaline, etc. Moving forward, let's talk about the analgesics. So here we see the second category of neurologically active drugs which are analgesics. Analgesics, they are called painkillers. It is so because they help in relieving pain. So they kill the pain, alright. Now here we see that analgesics are again divided into two broad categories. The first are called as non-narcotics and the second are called as narcotics. So let's have a look what are non-narcotics. Well, we call them so because these are non-addictive. So even if you take them a number of times, you do not get addicted to them, okay? And the common, most common examples are aspirin and paracetamol. So aspirin and paracetamol are two drugs that we usually take when we have any kind of pain in our body. Here when we look closely at aspirin, we see that the first function 
और हाउ डज इट रिलीव द पेन इज बाय इनिबिटिंग द सिंथेसिस ऑफ प्रोस्टा ग्लैंडिंग्स सो प्रोस्टा ग्लैंडिंग्स आर दो सब्सटेंसेस इन आर बॉडी विच कॉज इन्फ्लेमेशन एंड बिकॉज ऑफ विच वी फील पेन नेक्स्ट वी सी दैट सिंस दे इनिबिट द सिंथेसिस ऑफ प्रोस्टा ग्लैंडिंग्स दे रिलीव द स्केलेटल पेन नेक्स्ट दे ऑल्सो रिड्यूजेज फीवर एंड हेंस वी कैन ऑल्सो कॉल दैम एंटी पायरेटिक्स सो एंटी मीन्स ऑपोजिट एंड पायर दिस टर्म मीन्स हीट so they reduces fever and hence we are also calling them anti pyretics so usually you see that when a person is suffering from fever and having body pain also the doctor might suggest taking aspirin or paracetamol next we see that since they prevent blood clotting so they do not lead the blood to make a clot and hence they can be given to patients suffering from any heart disease so as to prevent heart attack so this was about the non narcotic drugs in which we have seen the various features of aspirin moving forward let's have a look at the narcotics so these type of analgesics they are addictive so if they are taken a multiple times they become addictive okay now the examples are morphine and some of its homolog they can usually be called as opiates as they are taken or they as they are extracted from opium okay now next we see that they produce a sleeping kind of feeling and they also help in relieving the pain next we see that where are they usually used well they are usually used during or after the post operative pain so after the surgeries etc they can be used in a small amount next they can also be taken in cardiac pain to relieve that pain in the cancer and lastly during the ch child birth as well but here one very important thing for you to notice that their high dose is very dangerous and it can lead to coma convulsions stupor or even to death so this was about the two types of analgesics in which we have seen the non narcotics and the narcotics moving forward let's have a look at the structure and a few common examples of these two